a very good afternoon to one and all gathered here. Don Bosco had once said, remember, that education is a matter of the heart, of which God is the sole master and we will be unable to achieve anything unless God teaches us and puts the key in our hands. I feel extremely privileged to extend our warm welcome to Honorable MP Srimati Mohua Moitra, our chief guest, Jubilarians, Father V.T. Jos, Father Bertie Fernandez, guest of honor, Vice Provincial, Sri Dibendu Pal, T.I. Nadia, Srimati Vrita Das, Chairman of Krishnanagar Municipality. Other dignitaries, Reverend Father Rector, fathers, sisters, teachers, non-teaching staff, parents, and my dear friends, we are indeed very happy to have you in our midst. Today, 28th of January 2023, Don Bosco School Krishnanagar is finally ready to inaugurate its new building. We are also going to honor our jubilarians, Reverend Father Principal, as he celebrates his golden jubilee, and Father Bertie Fernandez, who is celebrating his diamond jubilee. The occasion would be celebrated through various performances, which had been meticulously prepared by the students under the guidance of the teachers. So, I would request the audience to fasten their seat belts as we take off this flight to the land of music and dance. Shubho Shondha, Upostit Shakol Ke Janai, Antorik Shubhetcha, O Ushno Obinandun, Shamajo Biddaloi, Poroshpor Nirbharshil, Uni Shatoke, Shudur Italite, Joleota Alok Shika, বিশ্বকে দেখিয়েছে শিক্ষা জগতের এক অন্যতম পথ আজ 28 জানুয়ারি সকলে ডন বস্কো বিদ্যালয় প্রাঙ্গণে সমবেত হয়েছি এক স্বর্ণালী সন্ধ্যার সাক্ষী থাকতে আমরা এক ঐতিহাসিক সন্ধিক্ষণে এসে দাঁড়িয়েছি যখন নবনির্মিত বিদ্যালয়ের দারদ ঘাটনের মধ্য দিয়ে সাধু ডন বস্কের রোপণ করা অনন্ত বিস্তৃত শিক্ষার বৃক্ষে এক নতুন পল্লবের জন্ম হবে আজকের আকাশ একটু বেশি রঙিন কেন জানেন আজ আমরা পালন করতে চলেছি পরম শ্রদ্ধেহ ফাদার প্রিন্সিপাল ভি টি জোসের যাজকীয় জীবনের সুবর্ণ জয়ন্তী এবং ফাদার বার্টি ফার্নান্দেজের যাজকীয় জীবনের হীরক জয়ন্তী এই বিশেষ দিনে আনন্দের মাত্রা বাড়িয়ে দিতে আমাদের মাঝে উপস্থিত রয়েছেন সাংসদ শ্রীমতি মহুয়া মৈত্র এমপি অফ কৃষ্ণনগর শ্রীমতি রীতা দাস চেয়ারম্যান অফ কৃষ্ণনগর মিউনিসিপ্যালিটি শ্রী দিব্যেন্দু পাল ডিআই অফ নদিয়া ফাদার ভাইস প্রভিন্সিয়াল ফাদার রেক্টর ফাদার বার্টি ফার্নান্দেজ এবং ফাদার প্রিন্সিপাল উপস্থিত সকল গুরুজনদের আমার সশ্রদ্ধ প্রণাম
darkness vanishes and life blooms at the presence of the light. Let us invite the divine light to come into our lives to dispel the darkness of hatred and gloom as the dignitaries light the lamp and the choir sings, carry your candle. I now call upon our dignitaries, our chief guest, Srimati Mahua Moitro, Reverend Father Bertie Fernandez, Reverend Father Principal V.T. Jose, Reverend Father Vice Provincial, Father Jijo John, the Economer, Reverend Father Rector, and Srimoti Rita Das. Good afternoon to all present here. 
unless the lord builds the house they labor in vain who build it unless the lord guards the city the watchman keeps awake in vain in don bosco we begin everything by invoking the blessings of the lord to come closer to him to encounter the divine dance is one of the best means when we dance to the beat of the energy of creation it opens up the doorway to the ultimate path that takes us into the ocean of devotion eventually every movement becomes the prayer and the means of complete surrender to the lord father berti and father jos our principal have totally surrendered themselves to the lord at their religious profession as we celebrate their jubilee we express our joy love and gratitude to the almighty lord through a prayer dance
I invite our respected chief guest for the inaugural address. I want to express mine and the whole school's gratitude to our beloved MP, Madam Mohua Moitra, for sparing her precious time to be with us today. She's a very busy person and much sought after. The land that we occupy originally belonged to her grandfather, Mr. Illapal Chaudhary. So it is only right that she inaugurates the school building that stands on that land. Listening to her speeches in the parliament, one cannot but admire her depth of knowledge, her ability to analyze and present facts most logically. Her auditory skill make everyone sit up and listen. Madam, we feel honored and grateful to have you in our midst today. May the Almighty God shower his choicest blessings upon you and keep you safe from every harm. May I now invite our chief guest to deliver her inaugural address. Thank you, Father. Thank you to the Father Principal, uh, Joes, and uh, Father Bertie Fernandez and everyone here, ladies and gentlemen, to the children, to the parents and guardians, to all the dignitaries present here today, thank you very much. I'm deeply honored to be here today as your chief guest. Um, I am privileged and proud to represent this constituency of Krishnanagar. And uh, this school has been operating here since 2016 in uh, Krishnanagar. Today I'm here for the opening and the inauguration of the new building. Uh, which was started in 2019 and has been completed, as you can see. It's a wonderful facility. So um, all in all, we, I thank the school, I thank Don Bosco for taking this educational institution forward. I was asking uh, Father Joes, I said, what should I say? And he says, oh, you're such a good orator. You don't need me to tell you what to say. So I said, no, Father, there are still certain things that, because you're in this every day that you think I should talk about. And what he said was very important. He says, it's not just about marks. It's not about marks. I think in this competitive rat race, we tend to forget that if we are all in the rat race, then we are all just rats, right? We all become just rats in this rat race. 
So when we are all competing for marks and in this competitive environment and everybody is worried about whether they are getting 99 or when we were young, getting 75 was wow, nobody got 80. Today I see people getting 97, 98, 99. And the joke is, how did that one mark go? How does anyone get 99 in science? In, I can understand in mathematics somebody getting 99. But I can't understand how in, in social sciences or liberal arts somebody gets you know, 97 in history or 98 in history, unless it is multiple choice. Anything that involves writing or analytical thinking or an essay, I, I cannot understand where we get this. And we have the cutoffs for universities getting higher and higher. We see the big universities and the big colleges in Delhi or in Bombay or even in Calcutta that unless you get 97 or 98, or, you, know, you can't get in. So obviously from a very early age, parents, guardians, the student body, the entire educational structure in our country feels this pressure. This pressure to conform, to turn out little mini robots that go there, that writes an exam. But at the end of the day, what does an exam test? An exam doesn't test how smart you are. An exam doesn't test how well you'll do in life. An exam only tests your ability to take that exam. That's it. So there are people who are very intelligent who don't necessarily pass exams. There are people who are quite stupid but who have good memories and they can remember and they study by rote and they pass exams. Now, passing an exam doesn't necessarily always translating into being very intelligent or doing very well in life. Now, there's another trick I've seen in my life. Each part of my life, so when I was in, say, class 10 or 12, I studied very hard and did well, but there were... My sister is older than me, and she always got less marks than me. But if you ask my father, my father would say, Bunty, who's my sister, is much more intelligent and the younger one just works hard, right? So I used to feel very bad and I used to say, why doesn't my Didi work hard once and show us that she can do it, right? Because she's always in this thing, she's more intelligent. But I've learned one thing in life. It is better to have mediocre intelligence and work very hard. They do much better than people who are super intelligent and who are lazy. Yes or no? Do you agree with this? When I take stock of my life and I see all my friends, whether in school, in college, in my working life, some people who were geniuses, who were very smart, but they were lazy, they took it for granted. They didn't have to study, they didn't have to work hard, it came easily. So when something comes easily, they took it for granted that they can do it. And somewhere along the way, in the tortoise and the hare's race, the tortoise catches up. So people who are hardworking, who you know, play by the rules. Over time, I always think, do better than people who are super intelligent and take it easy. So I think the lesson to all of us here, at least from my life is, is, you know, I've never been super, super intelligent. I've never, but I've always worked hard and been tenacious and been determined that when we decide to do something, we must finish it. So to go back to what Father Joseph said, is that it is not just about marks. It is about the all around development. It is about the discipline of when the children are coming in. I was watching them. And they all come in in a line and there's no noise. Nobody's talking. They come in, they stand in a line, they sing the song. Until somebody tells them to move, they're standing there. There's a certain discipline in that also. Now, that discipline, that listening to instructions, you know, doing what you're supposed to do, these are also very important facets of a personality, of a child's personality, and we must encourage them. We must encourage that. When it comes to sport, when it comes to elocution or dance or poetry, or all of these things are what make up a total human being. The idea of an education system, of any school, of any college, is to create good human beings. It is not to create robots. This world does not make robots. Human beings make robots. So I think this is something that he said very importantly. The other thing that I'm you know, we are faced with this problem all the time of private education and public education. So when you look at the Scandinavian model and you look at Denmark and you look at Finland and you look at Norway, where there are no private schools, all the schools are state schools and they're funded by, nobody pays fees, it's all funded by the state, there is no concept of a private education, everybody is literate, everybody studies, 
everything works out. But then when you come to a lot of countries in the world, including the US, including the UK, including India, there is a great divide between the private school education and between the public school education. Now, there are schools nowadays which charge 20,000 rupees a month. There are schools like that. I'm not even talking about boarding schools. I'm talking about day schools. I'm talking about schools that have air-conditioned classrooms, that have air-conditioned buses, that have, you know, so many things. Now, I'm not saying this is good or bad, but I went to a normal school where there was power cut half the time. I went to a normal school where there was power cut half the time. Where I didn't even notice if the fan worked or not. And we went in the normal bus. We felt hot. Yes, it's okay. Right? So I think that there is place for everything in life. But the important thing is when you have a school like Don Bosco, you're actually giving a quality education and a disciplined education to people at a price point that is not necessarily that of a private school system. That is the benefit, I would say, of of um, something like a Don Bosco in a place like Trishunagar where there is great demand for an English medium education. There is a great demand for an English medium education and for us in the public school system in West Bengal, we have a dearth of English medium schools in the public school or the state school system. Now to compete, to when, when we go up the aspiration graph, when uh, parents start earning and they want to do well, the first thing they want to do well is before they buy a car, before they buy a house, they think I want to put my children in a good school. Now what is a good school? To most people from socio-economically middle class backgrounds, a good school necessarily means that a school that will allow the child to go anywhere outside of their immediate vicinity and be able to succeed. Now the first thing that is required in something like that is language is language. So the first thing that most aspirational parents want from lower income and middle income areas is an English education. And that is something that Don Bosco is providing to the area along with obviously an all round development. This school has 524 children. It is evenly split between girls and boys. I saw the facilities in the new building, fantastic facilities. You're getting a school ground for girls here. There's one for the boys ahead. And I can only say that you have me, I'm proud and privileged to represent this area. You have me always, whenever you want something, if any help required in anything, I am always here. And I hope going forward that together we can provide a quality education and create good human beings. Because that's what we need. We need to instill empathy in people. We need, why do people... Why do people respect missionaries? Why do people respect a priest? Why do people respect a holy person? Because they represent sacrifice. I have given up something. People respect the fact that somebody, a human being can be selfish, but they respect somebody else who has given up something. So when missionaries started this thing of teaching and you giving up the idea of leaving home, of giving up, of spending their whole life in a village teaching children, this is what inculcated respect in people. And I think even today, in the smallest corner of India, a doctor and a teacher are always respected, right? A doctor for saving lives and a teacher for molding lives. And I think going forward, this is something that we have to thank the student body at, uh, the teaching body at Don Bosco for. You're helping us mold the children for a better tomorrow. And I hope that together we can take this district forward, we can take the state forward, and ultimately take our country forward. Thank you so very much for inviting me. And I can just end with a few lines of the, God's, of the Lord's Prayer. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. All of us. And uh, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Dancing is one of the best way to express our emotions. Hence, we express our happiness and gratitude to our Father Principal and Father Bertie on this special day of Jubilee through this turn. Yeah.
Good evening, everyone. Today we are going to move our feet on the song Lungi Dance. This song was dedicated to the South Indian superstar Rajni Kant. As we celebrate our father principles and father birthday's jubilee, we are going to dedicate our performance to the stars of the day, Reverend Father V.T. Jose and Reverend Father Bertie. This is the tribute to Talaiwa. Mucho ko thoda round ghuma ke, anna ke jai sachi shala ga ke, koko net mein lassi mila ke, aaja usar mood bana ke. Mucho ko thoda round ghuma ke, anna ke jai sachi shala ga ke, koko net mein lassi mila ke, aaja usar mood bana ke. All the Rajni fans, don't miss the chance. इसको में जब ये गाना बजेगा ऑन द फ्लोर आना पड़ेगा लुंगी को उठाना पड़ेगा स्टेप करके दिखाना पड़ेगा इसको में जब ये गाना बजेगा ऑन द फ्लोर आना पड़ेगा लुंगी को उठाना पड़ेगा स्टेप करके दिखाना पड़ेगा ऑल द रजनी नाइटी कलब में आया मई तो मुझको रोकेगा कौन और गाई को मेरा मूड में डांस करेगा किसी का डैडी से नहीं डरेगा जिसको जो भी है करना वो कर लो इधर ही मैं हूँ खड़ा पकड़ लो घर पे जाके तुम गूगल कर लो मेरे बारे में विकिपीडिया पे पढ़ लो मुझो को थोड़ा राउंड घुमा के अन्ना कई जैसा चश्मा लगा के कोको मेट में लस्सी मिला के आजा उस सारे मूड बना के मुझो को थोड़ा राउंड घुमा के अन्ना कई जैसा चश्मा लगा के कोको मेट में लस्सी मिला के आजा उस सारे मूड बना के और दर्जनी ગંગોત્રીર ગર્ભોથેકે નિસ્રીતો ધારાર કિનારાય બશોતી ગોરે છે મોનુષ્ષો સમાજેર ઇતિહાશ તાર સ્પર્ષો કરે છેન હાજારો રીદાય એખોન સ્કૂલ કાયેર ભૂપેન હાજારીકાર બીગ ખાતો ગાન ઓ ગંગા તુમી
Mother's love is beyond comparison. Father Joe's, as the youngest child, has experienced that love in abundance. For him, his mother was the inspiration, and it is from her that he learned to have devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, the epitome of pure love. The song, O Pyari Ma, which the choir will render now, expresses his as well as our feelings of love and devotion to Mother Mary and our mothers. The song is dedicated to all our mothers.
রবীন্দ্র সাহিত্য ও জীবন দর্শনের এক অন্যতম সৃষ্টি চণ্ডালিকা যেখানে তিনি মানুষের সর্বাঙ্গীন মুক্তির এক অনুপম চিত্র অঙ্কন করেছেন চণ্ডালিকা মূলত প্রকৃতি নামের এক অচ্ছুত নারীর দেহ মনের চেতনা লাভের ব্যতিক্রমী কাহিনী প্রকৃতি নামের এই চণ্ডালিনী নারীর কাছে এক বৌদ্ধ শিষ্য আনন্দ জলপান করার ইচ্ছা প্রকাশ করেন এই আগ্রহের কারণেই প্রকৃতির সকল অবগুণ্ঠন উন্মোচিত হয়ে তার মধ্যে জাগ্রত হয় সত্যের নববোধ জন্মান্তরের সকল হীনমন্যতা থেকে মুক্ত হয়ে প্রকৃতির আপন সত্তার স্বরূপ বিকশিত উদ্ভাসিত হয়ে ওঠে আজ আমাদের বিদ্যালয়ের শিক্ষার্থীরা চণ্ডালিকা নৃত্যনাট্য পরিবেশনের মাধ্যমে সেই সত্যকেই উপস্থাপন করতে চলেছে ধন্যবাদ মা দিগন্তে তাকিয়ে দেখো রক্তি মেঘে সর্বনাশের আভাস ওই সর্বনাশের আগুন পেরিয়ে আমার দুয়ারে এসে দাঁড়ায়নি কোন আনন্দ অঞ্জলি পেতে কেউ বলেনি জল ধাও সারা জীবন আমাকে তীব্র পিপাসায় চিৎকার করতে হয়েছে চৈত্রের মধ্য দুপুরে পাখিরাও ডানা গুটিয়ে নেয় দূর শহরের রাস্তায় বাবুদের ভিড় নেই গায়ের কুকুরগুলো ঢুকে যেতে চায় উঠোনের ছায়ায় আমাকে এখন যেতে হবে দূর নদীর চড়া বালি খুঁড়ে তুলে আনতে হবে ফোটা ফোটা জল তারপর ফিরে আসব খরায় ফাটা মা শুকনো পুকু আর টল টলে জলে ভরা নতুন ইঁদারার পাশ দিয়ে বাবুদের ইঁদারা তৃষ্ণায় ডুবে যায় আমাদের গোটা গা কুকুর আর মানুষের জীব ঝুলে পড়ে আর বাবুদের ইঁদারা বাবুদের ছেলেদের স্নান আমার শরীর জ্বলে যায় চৈত্রের খরায় মা আমি এক চণ্ডালিকা বাঁকুড়া পুরুলিয়া ঢারে হা হা করা মাঠ ফাটে বিহারের তপ্ত প্রান্তর চিড়ে আমি চিৎকার করছি
चाई गो दोई चाई दोई चाई गो दोई चाई गो दोई चाई दोई चाई गो शेमोलिया मर गई तुलो ना ताहर नाई 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 गो दोई चाई गो दोई चाई दोई चाई गो दोई चाई गो दोई चाई दोई चाई गो कंकुन नो दिर धारे भोर बैला निये जाई तारे कंकुन नो दिर धारे भोर बैला निये जाई तारे दूर बादल घन माठे नो दिर धारे 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 तारे शारा बैला चोराई चोराई गो दोई चाई गो दोई चाई दोई चाई गो दोई चाई गो दोई चाई दोई चाई गो देह खानी तार चिकन कालो जत देखी तत लागे भालो देह खानी तार चिकन कालो जत देखी तत लागे भालो काछे बोशे जाई बोके उत्तर दैशे चोखे काछे बोशे जाई बोके उत्तर दैशे चोखे पीठे मोर राखे माथा गाए तार हाथ बोलाई हाथ बोलाई गो ओ दोई चाई गो दोई चाई दोई चाई गो दोई चाई गो दोई चाई दोई चाई गो
সাথে সেতে খুঁজে খুঁজে গো শেষকালে এই খাই ভাগ্যে দেখা পেলে মে রক্ষা তাই সাথে সেতে খুঁজে খুঁজে গো শেষকালে এই খাই ভাগ্যে দেখা পেলে মে রক্ষা তাই কেন গো পি চাই কেন গো পি চাই রানী মারে পোষা পাখি কোথায় উড়ে গেছে সেই নিদার মুশকে ঘুম নেই তার চোখে ও চারণের বউ ফিরিয়ে এনে দিতেই হবে তোকে ও চারণের বউ পুরো পাখি আসবে ফিরে এমন কি গুণ জানি পুরো পাখি আসবে ফিরে এমন কি গুণ জানি মিথ্যে ও জোর শুনব না শুনব না শুনবে না তোর রানী জাদু করে মন্ত্র করে ফিরে আনতেই হবে খালাস পাবি তবে ও চারণের বউ খালাস পাবি তবে ও চারণের বউ খালাস পাবি তবে ও চারণের বউ
now i would like to invite reverend father principal to address the gathering respected father vice provincial jubilarian father berti fernandes provincial economer father jijo father rector fathers sisters friends dear parents teachers and students as i stand here my heart goes out in praise and thanks to god almighty and our blessed mother mary the lord has been faithful for the last 50 years and kept me going in spite of my weakness and shortcomings i have experienced his unconditional love in innumerable ways his mercy and compassion for me has been boundless the support and protection of mother mary has been very tangible in my life for all these mercies i bow my head in humble adoration and gratitude i want to just mention the history of the the school at the behest of the then provincial the present bishop nirmal gomes the don bosco community started the english medium school father mani playing a leading role my predecessors father robin gomes father alex father dorpan and father ujjal mondol the present rector have very ably guided the school to its present state we are grateful to all of them also the bursars father pj matthew and now brother chandan at present the school has a strength of 524 students with 23 teachers three office staff and eight support staff with the completion of the new building we practically have all the required facilities our students are bright and talented but they need to work more the pandemic had its devastating effect on our children the study habits have taken a beating self discipline is anything but to be desired addiction to mobile and internet seem to be growing the young minds are getting distracted and deviated all the recent researchers point to the fact that this is the worst type of addiction and can ruin the future of a bright student so it is imperative that both the school and the parents be of one mind in addressing this problem let us not close our eyes and say my child has no such a problem we will regret it tomorrow our teaching staff is well qualified talented and hard working all the items of today have been prepared by them with no external help i would like to thank them for the pains they have taken in getting your children ready for this program and more so for the cooperation they extend to me throughout the year our non teaching staff is the backbone of our school they work behind the scene but they are an indispensable part of the school our office staff mr arun ekka in particular have been very ever ready to do any work for the school our aunties much loved by the students take care of your children and the cleanliness of the school their commitment is praiseworthy i like to put on record my appreciation and gratitude for the hard work our non teaching staff put in for the smooth running of the school in order to help develop the multiple intelligence of our children we have a good number of co curricular activities and competitions are held throughout the year our students participated in bosco expression organized by don bosco bandel and won number of prizes they regularly participate in various olympiads like silver sip and minerva olympiads winning prizes and certificates to develop their social consciousness and responsibility to society students are encouraged to make a sacrifice and contribute part of their pocket money for social causes they collected around 18000 rupees last year which will go for the education of a poor girl child in gajol our senior students visited old age homes after the children's day and christmas celebrations and presented cakes and fruits to the inmates we have a new school building 
solely because of the keen interest shown by the provincial team, in particular, Father Jijo John, our provincial economist, who made all the arrangements for the funds required. Our heartfelt thanks goes to Father Provincial, Father Vice Provincial, Father Economist, and the rest of the provincial team. As we did not have any funds or resources, the school building is built with the borrowed money from our various institutions. Don Bosco Ashale, Don Bosco Liluva, Don Bosco Park Circus, Don Bosco Siliguri, and DB Doc Kolkata. We thank them for their generosity. Also, some of my former students have contributed, Mr. Nishan Mittal and Mr. Ajay Agrawal. Some others have promised to help. Now, I appeal to you, dear parents, to contribute whatever you are able to so that we can fully furnish the school. It would be unfair on my part if I don't thank all those who were involved in materially getting the building constructed. Initial planning was done by Mr. Kanjilal under the direction of Reverend Father Vincent de Mondol, the then economist. Kanjilal continued the supervision work and then Mr. Ojoy Saha took over. Rajendra Kumar Singh was the contractor who shouldered the entire responsibility in getting the building constructed. He was assisted by Mr. Sanjay Mondol, Mr. Dilip Nayak, Mr. Sheikh Tuboy, Sheikh Habib and Abhijit Mondol and many others. Don Bosco Technical Workshop had a big share in getting the building furnished under the able guidance of Reverend Father Manoj Hasda. I extend a big thank you to each one of them for their contribution in constructing this temple of learning. May the good Lord bless them abundantly. As I conclude, I want to thank my confreres in the province who have been encouraging and supporting me, especially my community members, Father Rector, Brother Chandan, and all the fathers and brothers. A very spe special thanks to you, dear parents, for your understanding and cooperation. I am ever grateful to your wonderful children who bring so much of happiness into our lives by their loving presence in the school. And I want to assure you, dear parents, that we are committed to the well-being of your children and will do everything possible to give them the best in order to bring out the best in them. God bless you. Now, I would like to invite representative from the schools that have contributed to the building. Don, uh, Don Bosco Ashalem, I think there is no one here. Don Bosco Liluva, they are also gone. Don Bosco Park Circus, then none of them are there. Siliguri, of course, is not here. So I, I would invite uh, Rajender and his team to come up, and I invite Father Rector to honor them.
Thank you, Father Rector. The advantage of pausing a sense of humor is that it enables one to defy fate with mocking laughter. Today, we are honored to perform the drama Refund by Fred's Carinthy. The play is full of humor, which deals with an extraordinary absurd situation. This is the story of a former student, Vosikov, who demands that his tuition fees of the school should be refunded because he feels his education was worthless. Arise on the stage and find out by yourself whether Vosikov would be successful in his absurd mission or not. Go to my school and get my tuition fees back. 
really, but now look here, look here. We have never had any request like yours before. Leatherer told you. He is a good friend. Leatherer, after I get my money back, I am going to buy him a present. You, you are not really serious, are you? I was never more serious in my life. Treat me wrong here. I'll go straight to the Ministry of Education and complain about you. You took my money and taught me nothing. You are mad. I was in the matter over after you have gone. No, no. You don't get rid of me so easy. I'll go when everything will be settled. What makes you think that? You can't do anything. Everybody thinks so. If I get a job, I can't keep it. Give me an examination and tell me what I ought to do. Call in those masters and let them speak. What a distressing business. How unfortunate. You really want to take another examination? Yes, I've got the right to take one. What an unusual thing. I shall have to console the staff. Will you please wait in the waiting room and give me some time? Yes, but be quick. I've got no time to waste. Ask the staff to come here at once. A most extraordinary conference. Yes, sir. Take your seats. <coughs> Gentlemen, I have asked you to come here on an account of most unusual state of affairs. A former pupil has come to see me with an individual named Vaskov. He came up with a request which I have never encountered in my many years of experience. Tell us about it. He wants, he wants his tuition fees back. Why? Because he's lost his job. Because he's broke. The case is natural. The law of conservation of energy proves that any given pupil may lose in any given period as much knowledge as a teacher can drill into his head Another period of life duration. <coughs> there is nothing like this in the history of civilization. It is said that barbers learned nothing and forgot nothing. The question is does he want the amount with simple or compound interest? Where is the fellow? Anyhow, he is waiting outside. He wants to be re examined. He says he learned nothing. Our re examination? If he fails, he will place us in an awkward position. Therefore, he must not fail. We are dealing with a sly, crafty individual who will try to get the better of us and his money back. By hook or crook. We must checkmate him. How? By sticking together. The object is to prevent him from failing. Because if he fails, he succeeds that we must stop. If he fails, tomorrow there will be two more former pupils and the next day a dozen. Who will decide? I. If you will permit me. Mr. Principal, let us proceed with the examination. We will show the former pupil that we too can be shrewd. Show him, Masuka. Yes, sir. Quite 
right, quite right. Manners, excellent. Agreed, agreed. My being gentlemanly isn't going to pass this examination. Let me fail as quick as possible and give you my two cent feedback. The examination will begin with history. Hey, Baskov, won't you be seated? To the hell with the seat! I'll stand! Bravo! Excellent! It follows that his physical condition is splendid and I take it upon myself to award him excellent in physical culture. Quite right, quite right. Physical culture, excellent. Agreed, agreed. No, you got me one, didn't you? Well, you won't do it again. From now, I'll have my ears open. I like this. Very good. Possible. Unusual. Logic. Excellent. Get on with your questions. Ambition. Boundless. He seems just a minute. What's the matter, Squelfa? Ain't you prepared? A moment. Candidate. Answer this question. How long did the 30 years war last? I mean to say I don't know. Please answer my question. I'm sure you know. Give me the answer. I know exactly, exactly seven meters. It's possible I am wrong. And if I am seven meters, Ha ha, seven meters. Please, give me my tuition feedback. Seven meters? Right. What? Your answer is excellent. What did you say? The answer is correct as a matter of fact. The quantum theory, Einstein, it's all very simple. Don't say any other word. We understand perfectly. Einstein has taught us that time is relevant. Because the actual warfare took place only a half of each day. So, that is to say, 12 hours out of 24 and 30 years at once became 15. But not even 15 years were given us to incessant fighting. Because the combatants had to eat 3 hours a day, reducing our 15 years to 12. To social distractions, we are left only with the time which the candidate has represented by the Einsteinian equivalent. Very good in history. History. Very good. That is examination in history. You tricksters, ask your questions or don't. I haven't got any more time. To waste. Oh, now I remember you. Do you know what we used to call you behind your back? We called you a cannibal because you were always chewing your thumb. Just as you are doing now. Don't get excited, little man. Ask me the hard questions instead. Blow me! And now, tell me, Herr Vasakov, two o'clock in church, steeples become smaller when you move away from them, or they merely appear to become smaller of an optical illusion? What an absolute rot! How should I know? Whenever I walk away from the clocks, they get larger invariably. If I want them to get smaller, I turn round and walk towards them. They are not smaller at all. In a word. Therefore, in a word. In a word. Therefore, you give me pain in my neck. You are an ass. That is my answer. Good. It's correct. What? A difficult answer, but a most brilliant one. I explain why the look of the ass so sad. Because we are all victims of illusion. Obviously, the illusions of self.
sense. For us, lacks imagination. And this must be none other than an optical illusion. Since us, like us, observe the object that appears to become smaller when we move away from them. The answer was correct. I certify. Therefore, candid must be given. Very good in physics. Physics. Very good. Tell me, candidate, I will tell you. I will tell you. Oh, how I used to hate you 18 years ago. Please tell me, what city of same name is capital of German province approached me? What a silly question. The answer is part of the question, isn't it? And the answer, what is it? Same, of course. If the name of the city is same, then the name of the city is same, right? If it isn't, I fail and you give my tuition feedback. The answer is correct. What? Gentlemen, this can show exceptional knowledge of the city rooms. Once there was a legend as Emperor Barbosa was riding into the city. He met a young peasant girl who was munching apple. He called out to her, God bless you. What's the name of the city? The peasant girl answered, same to you, sir. Then she stopped because her mouth was full. And then Ember laughed and said, ho ho, the name of the city is same. And many years thereafter, he never referred to Brunswick except that title. The answer was correct. I certified that this candidate should be given excellent in geography. Geography. Excellent. Only the examination in mathematics is left. So here you are, old stick in the mud, that you always were. Do you know we used to call you old stick in the mud behind your back? You must not joke about a serious examination. I'm going to ask you two questions. One of them is easy and the other one is hard. The same old stick in the mud that you always wear. I remember the pictures of you that we used to draw on the board. If this were an examination in art, you would be marked excellent. But we are dealing with mathematics, the easy question. If we represent the speed of light by x and the distance of star Sirius from sun by y, what is the circumference of a 109-sided regular polyhedron? Will you repeat the question? No. Either you paid attention or you don't. Either you know the answer or you don't. Tell me the answer. Because you don't. I know me. it. Naturally, I know it. I will tell you exactly. 2,628 liters. Exact. No fraction. And I did give you the correct answer, which is too good. No. The answer is wrong. The correct answer is 2,629 liters and not 28. I refuse to pass the candidate. Mark him failure. I told you so. I told you so. Professor, professor. I'm sorry. It is his error amounted to less than a tenth of a percent in the total. But it was an error. He fails. That's so and that is right. Give my tuition feedback. Is that what you think? Absolutely. This is a good school and it is our duty to see that nothing ever injures its reputation. How much do we owe you here, Vosikov? I will tell you exactly. I attended this school for six years in total. So the amount will be... Six thousand four hundred and fifty crowns and sixty 
helots. Knock off some helots, call them clowns. Exactly. Exactly. You can rely on it. It's right. There is no question of it. It's right to the smallest detail. I congratulate you. That was my difficult question. <laughs> I certify that the candidate passes in mathematics. His answer to the easy question was a very little out of the way, but his answer to the difficult question, how much the refund should be, was exactly correct. Herr Wasakov is a mathematical genius. Sir, that put one over me. I present the result of the examination. Here, Bosokov has passed every subject with a distinction and has again showed that he is <coughs> entitled to the certificate that we awarded him on his graduation. Oh, you here, Bosokov, we offer your congratulations. So, I am a numbskull, am I? Say it again and I will show you what is what. I'm a cannibal, what? And you are the one who tied a string across the aisle. Hypocrite, nitwit, ash, me? All stick in the mud? <laughs> Remove that object. Yes, sir. My tuition fees! I want my tuition fees back! My money! My money! Thank you, gentlemen, for your magnificent cooperation. In future, it will be our proudest boast that a scholar simply cannot fail. We haven't gone anywhere. So, Dad, let's plan something. Let's go to Goa. No, let's go to a calm and blissful place. Why don't we visit Assam? Oh, yes. Come, let's visit Assam.
one of the most culturally prosperous state of india which is filled with surprises this rich culture make the state more glorious the state of west bengal orangoboti re rangoboti अरे रंगवती रंगवती कोन कोलता हसी बदे कोन कथा हाय गोल जे लाजे 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 हे लाजे 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 लाई जाउ छी माथा मोर नै करो नै करो अथा अरे मित्र भानु गोंतियार कथा है प्रभु दत्त प्रधान करिल सुर एत सुंदर गीत गीत एक तुम्हारे भाषा शुनाब ना कि गो रंगवती रे रंगवती रंगवती रे रंगवती रंगपति रंगपति रंगीला अंतरे हावडुबु तुम्हारी कथा रंगपति रंगपति रंगीला अंतरे हावडुबु तुम्हारी कथा खजुरे हाहाकार रंगवती 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 रे रंगवती रंगवती रे रंगवती प्रिया प्रिया रोल खाते मन भी हंग नमार जीवन भूलाय उड़ी जाए रे
Okay. Now let visit a state dotted with mangrove forest with the crystal blue waters of the sea splashing against the shore. The state of Orisha. Ajanta Caves and also their electrifying Lavni. Let's move towards Maharashtra. But 
जैसी सच धज देखो मेरे पिया की सारी जिया से बारी मेरे अंगना में देखो आज खिला है चा नमस्ते मनुष्य एक ऐसा प्राणी है जिसमें सोचने समझने की शक्ति है ईश्वर ने हमें बुद्धि तथा दिमाग इसलिए प्रदान किया है ताकि हम अपना प्रत्येक कार्य सोच समझकर करें बिना सोचे समझे किया गया कार्य हमारे लिए घातक और हानिकारक सिद्ध हो सकता है जो लोग अपने कार्य को बिना सोचे समझे करते हैं उन्हें बाद में पछताना पड़ता है यही शिक्षा इस प्रस्तुत नाटक के माध्यम से दी गई है यह नाटक शिक्षा प्रद होने के साथ साथ एक मनोरंजक व्यंग्य भी है पहला दृश्य नगर के बाहर सड़क पर महंत जी और दो चेले बातें कर रहे हैं बच्चा नारायण दास ये नगर तो दूर से बड़ा ही सुंदर दिख रहा है अरे जरा देख कुछ भिक्षा मिले तो भगवान को भोग लगाए गुरु जी महाराज नगरी तो बहुत ही सुंदर है अगर भिक्षा भी सुंदर मिले तो तो बड़ा ही आनंद है बच्चा गोवर्धन दास तुम पश्चिम की ओर जाओ और नारायण दास पूर्व की ओर जाएगा दूसरा दृश्य बाजार में महान जी का चेला गोवर्धन दास आता है क्यों भाई बनिए और देखो क्या भाव है टके से और चीनी टके से और चावल चावल भी टके से वाह क्यों भाजी का क्या भाव है बाबा जी तीसरा दृश्य जंगल में महान जी और नारायण दास एक ओर से आते हैं और दूसरी ओर से गोवर्धन दास आता है बच्चा गोवर्धन दास क्या भिक्षा लाया गंदी तो बहुत भारी मालूम पड़ती है गुरु जी महाराज सात पैसे भीख में मिले थे उससे साढ़े तीन सिर मिठाई मोल ली है तो बच्चा ये कौन सी नगरी है अंधेर 
नगरी चौपट राजा टके सिर भाजी टके सिर खाजा तो बच्चा ऐसे नगर में रहना सही नहीं जहाँ टके सिर भाजी और टके सिर खाजा बिकता है गुरुजी महाराज ऐसा नगरी तो संसार भर में और कहीं भी नहीं है दो पैसे साथ रहने से मजे में पेट भरता है मैं तो इस नगरी को छोड़कर नहीं जाऊंगा हाँ देख बच्चा पीछे पछताएगा मैं तो इस नगर में अब एक क्षण भी नहीं जाऊंगा देख मेरी बात मान नहीं तो पीछे पछताएगा मैं तो जाता हूँ पर इतना कह देता हूँ कि कभी संकट पड़े तो याद करना मुझे चौथा दृश्य देखो सजा है चौपट राजा का दरबार जहाँ करता है वह अपनी मूर्खता का प्रदर्शन बार बार यही अंधी और अधर्म से इस दरबार की चाल में ऐसा ही होता आया है न्याय चौपट राजा की दरबार में नृत्य प्रस्तुत किया जाए वाह बड़ा अच्छा नृत्य था मेरा सेवक कहा है यह किसकी आवाज है महाराज कल लो बनिए की दीवार गिर पड़ी तो मेरी बकरी उसके नीचे दब गए तुम्हारे है महाराज न्याय हो तुम्हारे साथ ऐसा न्याय होगा जैसे यम के यहां बिना होता हो दीवार पकड़ लाओ हा 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 महाराज दीवार थोड़ी में पकड़ सकते हैं अच्छा तो उसकी भाई बहन या रिश्तेदार किसी को तो पकड़ लाओ हा 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 महाराज दीवार के भाई बहन और रिश्तेदार नहीं होते वो तो ईटा चूने की बनी होती है अच्छा तो फिर कल्लू बनिए को पकड़ लाओ क्यों भाई बनिए इसकी बरकी कैसे मर गई बरकी नहीं महाराज बकरी बकरी ओ अच्छा बकरी इसकी बकरी कैसे मर गई महाराज मेरा कुछ कसूर नहीं कारीगर ने ऐसी दीवार बनाई कि गिर पड़ी अच्छा तो अब कारीगर को पकड़ लाओ और ले जाओ इस बनिए को क्यों भाई कारीगर इसकी बकरी कैसे मर गई महाराज मेरा कोई कसूर नहीं चूने वाले ने चूना ही ऐसा खड़ा बनाया कि दीवार गिर पड़ी अच्छा तो अब चूने वाले को पकड़ लाओ और ले जाओ कारीगर को क्यों भाई चूने वाले तूने खड़ा चूना क्यों दिया महाराज मेरा कोई दोष नहीं विस्ती ने चूना में पानी डालता था किसी से चूना कमजोर हो गया अच्छा तो अब विस्ती को पकड़ लाओ और ले जाओ चूने वाले को क्यों भाई विस्ती तूने इतना पानी क्यों डाल दिया कि दीवार कमजोर हो गई और बकरी मर गई महाराज गुलाब का कोई दोष नहीं कसाई ने मस्जिद इतनी बड़ी बना दी उसमें पानी ज्यादा आ गया अच्छा तो अब कसाई को पकड़ लाओ और ले जाओ विस्ती को क्यों भाई कसाई तूने ऐसी बड़ी मस्जिद क्यों बनाई महाराज कठिन ऐसी बड़ी बीट मेरे हाथ बेची कि मशक बड़ी बन गई। अच्छा तो अब गडरिये को पकड़ लाओ और ले जाओ कसाई को क्यों भाई गडरिये तूने ऐसी बड़ी भेड़ क्यों बेची महाराज उधर से कोतवाल साहब की सवारी आ रही थी इस कारण मैंने छोटी बड़ी भेड़ का ख्याल ही नहीं किया मेरा कोई दोष नहीं अच्छा तो अब कोतवाल को पकड़ लाओ और ले जाओ गडरिये को क्यों भाई कोतवाल तूने ऐसी शानदार सवारी निकाली 
कि गणरिया ने घबरा कर बड़ी बेर बेच दी है महाराज मेरा कोई कसूर नहीं मैं तो शहर के इंतजाम के लिए जाता था अरे ऐसा ना हो कि बेवकूफ राजा इस बात पे पूरे नगर को फूक दे फांसी दे दे नहीं तुमने इतनी धूम से सवारी क्यों निकाली हाँ हाँ ये नहीं तुमने ऐसी धूम से सवारी क्यों निकाली कि इसका परिणाम ये हुआ कि बकरी मर गई महाराज महाराज कुछ नहीं महाराज महाराज ले जाओ कोतवाल को शीघ्र फांसी पे चढ़ा दो पांचवा दृश्य गोवर्धन दास जंगल में बैठा मिठाई खा रहा है गोवर्धन दास को पकड़े हुए सिपाहियों का प्रवेश तो 
मैं राजा बन गया जहाँ न धर्म न बुद्धि न ही नीति न सूजन समाज दे ऐसे अपहन से जैसे चौपट राज अर्थात जिस राज्य में न बुद्धि हो न नीति हो न धर्म हो उस राज्य का स्वयं ही नष्ट होना तय है Good evening everyone. In our lives we make mistakes. We overthink, we assume and we mess things up. But at the end of the day, it's only we who will rule our own life. So here we are going to represent all the warriors who will fight back to take charge of their own life through our dance.
Now we have come to an end of this historic evening of this wonderful journey. Respected chief guest, guests of honor, the dignitaries, reverend fathers, sisters, dear parents, and friends. Thank you very much for joining us and enjoying these lovely moments with us today. I hope your presence will be with us forever like this in coming days too. As T.S. Eliot had once rightly said, to make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where we start from. Now our choir will implore the Almighty to bless each one of you through their song, Let the Lord Bless You. for the National Anthem.